hell. <laughs> yeah. He ate it. He ate it. Got him. Holy shit! Come on, fiasco, fiasco. These are strong fish, so I'm just gonna cut his gills right here. There we go. Oh my gosh, bro. All right guys, I am no longer in the Keys. I'm in my driveway with this makeshift fillet table. This is actually a cart that Chris Lowe and I, the guy that I was in the Keys with, found on our last Keys trip. And it actually turns out to be a perfect size fillet table for this permit. Cool thing about these fish, number one, I'm sure you guys know they look a lot alike a pompano. You guys have seen me do a pompano catch and cook. Very similar fish. They look about the same, except they get a lot bigger. They get all the way up to 60 pounds, and these things fight so damn hard. These fish have definitely earned my respect. I wanna give you guys a closer look, and the reason I say they're so smart is you see that eyeball? This fish has an extremely large eyeball compared to other fish, and it makes them very leader shy. Fish pretty light leader. We're fishing 40 pound fluorocarbon, and these guys are also very picky because they eat only crabs and crustaceans. You know, in the wild they say they eat fish, but very rarely will you ever catch a permit on a bait like a pilchard or a sardine. They almost only exclusively eat blue crabs, calico crabs, shrimp. And all of these baits are very expensive. So when we go down to the Keys, we're paying a hefty price to catch these fish. We spent, Chris Lowe and I spent $50 alone just on crabs. So there's a little history on this guy. Let's get to flaying him up. And I wanna show you guys something very cool about this fish and it's gonna be in his stomach. So just like the pompano catch and cook that I did, fish have a lot of head meat. So I'm just feeling around and I see where it's hard and I see where it kind of starts to get soft. So I follow that line all the way up and that's where I'm gonna start my incision with my knife. And I just kind of follow that all the way around. Go all the way up to the end of the head. Now we're just gonna do it like we do any other fish, just working all along that backbone. And seeing this fish dead, this is a permit. If you guys don't know, down here in Florida, these things are gold. These things are treasure. People spend their entire vacation, if you're a fisherman trying to catch these fish, they spend, spend thousands of dollars on guides and uh, learning how to master these fish on the flats. Well, I'll tell you what, this, the video of me filleting this might upset some people because people don't really view this fish as a good eating fish, even though it is. They view it almost entirely as this prize game fish that should be released. But at the end of the day, there are no rules. You're allowed to harvest these guys, which we did. The last time we went to the Keys, we were not able to because it was not season, but this time it is season. And you can sure as hell bet that if I have a good tasty fish just like this, I'm gonna harvest them. You see, all this meat right here, that's a nice little fillet. A lot of people, a lot of people would miss this head meat if you don't go follow it all the way around to the end of the head. Now the trickiest thing, I've only caught one other fish that I actually harvested a permit before in my life and I remember the trickiest thing is starting around here they got a massive rib cage and if you try to cut through that you're gonna be wasting a lot of time because it is not worth it you just got to get the meat around it see that's already that rib cage right there that I'm starting to feel I think this guy might, might be best tuna style where I cut an incision down the middle right here and then have two fillets a top lobe and a bottom lobe I think that might be the best approach to this fish. So I'm now I'm just going down the middle and I'm trying to get this top loin. So there's a beautiful top loin right there. And right here, see how you guys can hear how hard it is. That is all rib cage. And since I'm at home, don't have access to salt water, I am now a firm believer in never letting your fish fillets soak in fresh water before you eat them. So here's what the first fillet looks like. And I actually just took uh, some fresh water, mixed it with a bunch of salt water. I'm gonna set that guy in there for now. Now let's do this other half. So that rib cage is right, ends right around here. And that is just all tough to get around with my knife. It's probably been three years since I filleted a permit too. So I am definitely a little rusty. But I do remember that that was that toughest part was that rib cage meat. 
There's our bottom loin, if you could even call it that. There's the bottom one. So you guys can see, this fish, this all this right here is its rib cage. So if you try to go about it and normal approach and go right down beneath the peg fin, you'd be wasting your time. I remember that what that's what it was last time. That is all really hard meat. What I've really been excited about for this catch and cook is to show you guys the stomach, because you guys are gonna be amazed at what's in this bad boy. I'm gonna get this closer to you guys and I want you to hear this, listen to that. That's all just uh, shells and, and uh, parts of coral. Because these guys, they eat a bunch of little crustaceans, crushed up shells, crushed up sand. That's what it looks like. That's what's in their stomachs. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing I did last time. Just kind of follow the spine right down the tail and just make my cut right down the middle. These are a very broad bodied fish, just like a tuna. Always make that cut down the middle. This makes your life a lot easier. And then what I can do is, this meat will just separate right off here. This is my second filet right there. Put them in my bucket of salt water. So let's dig deeper into this stomach and really try to see what this guy's been eating aside from all of these shells. I want to see if there's anything actually solid in there. Cut out the stomach right there. Man, it's just full of just hard stuff. It's hard to breathe. Look at that. There's a piece of grass. It goes to show you, you know how sometimes as a fisherman, you always wonder if a fish will eat your bait if it's got a little grass or seaweed on it. We'll check that out right there. That's because these guys in the flats, in the keys or wherever they're at, they're looking in the sand, they're looking in the grass, they're looking for crabs and shrimp hiding. There's a little piece of seagrass from the keys in his belly. Other than that, it's just crabs, 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 crab shells and grass. There's another piece of grass right there. This big pot permit is nothing like the skin of those pompano. It is a lot more firm, and I don't think it would be very appetizing. So I'm gonna take the skin off. Look at that. See that? That is not the skin of a fish you'd want to eat. It is very thick, leathery, a lot of bloodline around it. It's just very chewy. So I'm gonna get rid of it. All right, guys. In the kitchen, permit fillets are right over here. Check those guys out. Very, very, very firm. And I cut them into probably one inch thick sections. And what I'm gonna do is, for my plan for this dish, I got these cast iron skillets. And now, Brooke and I always use these at her house whenever we cook. And the good thing about these things is they get your fish very, very crispy. So what I'm gonna try to go for is kind of like a, I've never pan seared, but I wanna do a pan seared slash blackened type fish. So I just have some blackening seasoning over here. I'm gonna keep this permit very simple because it's been a long time since I've had permit. I really wanna just taste the, the fish itself. So I got blackened seasoning, salt, pepper. We're not doing any sauce. Earlier, I made some potatoes, cut them up into little cubes, poured some olive oil on them, salt, pepper, paprika, and Italian seasoning. They are in the oven, but they are basically done. So they are in there, they're very crispy. I'm just gonna turn the oven off and let them go until we're ready. So I got my cast iron skillets right here. What I'm gonna do is, on pretty high heat, I'm on a medium high heat, we're gonna do some vegetable oil in the skillet, and some in there, not too much. Now these cast iron skillets get very hot, including the handle, so if you're ever working with them, make sure you use an oven mitt. I have my blackening seasoning right here. And I'm going to very liberally season these guys with the blackening seasoning. I want a very brown, crispy coat. Now I think we are ready. I hope it's gonna sizzle the way I'm expecting it to. Oh yeah. There's one, two, here is the permit guys. It is, like I said, it is very, 
very firm, and by very firm I mean it's almost kind of chewy. One thing I wanted to know about the fish is, I guess you couldn't really say it's bad because it's chewy. It's almost, it's like a, a really meaty, steaky fish. It, when you're eating it, it kind of tastes like you're eating steak. If I had to compare this fish to a steak flavor at all, it would definitely be permit. The flavor of the fish is very good. It is chewy. Now, I don't know if it's chewy because I overcooked it, because it was my first time cooking with a cast iron skillet on the actual stovetop. Usually we do it in a grill and it cooks evenly. I don't know if it was that I had really thick fillets, but the permit itself is not fishy at all, if you guys are wondering no. about it. Mm -hmm. And this is my biggest critic right here, my grandma. If you guys are new to the channel, my grandma is very picky when it comes to fish. So if she approves, it is generally not fishy. Now, yeah. um, the potatoes came out great. I want you guys to see this. The potatoes look really good. They're crispy. The I think my idea with the pan-seared blackening was there, but I dried it out somehow. I don't know, my whole house was just smoking. Smoke detector went off. But one thing I really wanted to bring up is, so, some of you who may be watching this probably don't know that you could eat permit, and number two, didn't know that people kill them and harvest okay. them to eat because permit are really highly prized game fish we have here in Florida. Like I said, people travel to the Keys, spend thousands of dollars trying to chase these fish for weeks at a time. And it's not, not that it's not accepted to kill them or harvest them, it's just not common practice. But uh, someone like myself, I go down in the Keys, I wanna you know harvest one or two a year, I do. And it was really good. Um, not my favorite fish to be honest, but definitely not bad, not fishy, but a little tough, I'd mm -hmm. say. It's kind of, it's a very uh, chewy texture. The filaments of the permit itself, they have a lot of, like you know those white filaments you see in between the, the flaking of the fish? That's what it, it really is. It does not flake at all. This is not a flaky fish at all. But overall, good. So if you guys like this video, you guys wanna see more like it, you guys want to cop a land shark shirt? Shark shirts are on sale, and uh, hopefully you guys like this video. I'll see you in the next one. Is this real life? Is this real life? Bye, bye.